Nick Kalaluri was an inspiration to everyone he knew. An undersized kid with an oversized heart never stopped surpassing people's expectations. A lot of players have contributed to the success of Hofstra's lacrosse program over the years, but not as much as sophomore Nick Kalaluri, or as his friends refer to him, as Fathead. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Me you and us, baby. baby. Come on, okay. Let's get it going. Nick uh, is a young man who came to us last year from Ridley, Pennsylvania. Uh, he was a freshman. Uh, tremendous enthusiasm, uh, an overachiever. Uh, in the first fall scrimmage, he made a couple of plays in his first fall scrimmage against North Carolina that just let us know that he was a competitor. When we first started playing, me and Nick told my parents, we made a bet with them, at that young of an age, we're going to go play Division One together, uh, we're going to get full scholarships, and uh, that dream came true for about two weeks. Last Thanksgiving, the family found out Nick had only days to live. The entire Pride team bust down to the Colliery home that Monday. At 4 o'clock in the morning, Nick uh, called Vinny D'Angelo over and, uh, and his brother Michael and just said, you ready to do this? And uh, they knew what, they, what he was talking about. He said, yep, I'm ready. Go get the rest of the family. They brought him into the room, kind of got into a circle. He went around the room, told everybody that he loved them. Couldn't hold on anymore. Passed away in his father's arms while, uh, while Michael had his hand on his heart and, uh, and holding his hand. I didn't know Nick very well. I only met him a couple of times, but every time I see the word cancer, I see 27, I see headstrong. Um, I've lost two parents to cancer. Um, we've had a lot of people come and go in and out of our lives and our family's lives here, each player. It was pretty special. The bravery, the boldness, the courage, for a young man of his age to come in and and speak to to the team and in front of the coaching staff it we weren't ready um you know the the thing that that nick loved was his brothers and for us it was about being there for him we all pulled into the locker room sat at our spots uh coach Donowski, you know did a a, a little quick intro and nick stood up and you know told us the news and not sure there was a dry eye in there. Um, he just took it with such poise and commitment to that he was going to beat it. And he, you know, fought every day of his life. And uh, that's all you can do is just be a fighter. And uh, that's what that's what Nick was. To me, it's it's those times of, of trouble in life that you get to reflect on. And gentlemen like Nick kind of bring a little bit of sense of energy and passion to your heart. And, and for me, it helps me get the days on, the weeks on. Um, during lacrosse season, it's even a little bit more difficult. And, and having that opportunity to kind of share Nick's stories with every place I lived and every part of the country and, and a lot of the impact that he's been able to make in those communities and to those families is, is something special. Um, we'll never forget that day as a team. Um, it was it was some of the most courageous words I've ever heard out of his mouth, out of anyone's mouth, and there wasn't going to let anything stop him. And and for that, that takes a special, unique person, and and Nick will forever be remembered. He was a firecracker. Nick had such passion in everything he did on and off the field. Um, you know, you got this short bulldog type kid who uh, would run through a brick wall for you. And it, it, he made his presence felt right out of the gate. You know, he wanted to be part of the team and do anything he could for his team. And it was just noticed right away by, you know, seniors, juniors, sophomores, you know, everybody just knew that this kid had the fire to, to play. I think that there are years that go by that people don't talk about retired numbers, right? Um, when
when's the last time you heard about a retired number somewhere else? But every year we have an anniversary of someone wearing number 27. It seems more efficient to keep Nick's spirit alive each year to talk about number 27 versus um, just in a, a yearbook that just gets printed once in a while and it does not get spoken of. But every year we have an announcement, we have a publication, we have a vote on who's gonna wear number 27. So when the coaches vote, we basically pull out who, who has Nick Calori characteristics and we throw their name tag on the desk and we'll slowly eliminate guys where everyone still deserves it, but someone deserves it more. And that's how we kind of end up on it. And then I'll always look at Coach Gorman and go, are you good with this? Because it, it's really more than a captain. It is more than a captain here at Hofstra. It feels pretty special. I feel like I'm not like out there alone like by myself. I feel like I have like a little part of Nick with me. Like in the uh, in our Head Strong tournament and scrimmages, when I would be feeling like a little bit tired, it's just like a little extra motivation for me to like dig deep and like make an extra play, take an extra shift. I just try to be the, the best 27 that I can be. I try not to compare myself to anybody that's worn it before or, or anything like that. I just try to be the best version of myself every single day. You have to be, you have to have some grit. Uh, first and foremost, you have to, uh, you have to be an overachiever. And you have to, you have to, you have to be able to overcome. And that's what Nick was about. And this year's recipient, Corey Kale, has overcome some things. And I know 100% that if Nick Kyle Laurie was on this team, him and Corey Kale would be best of friends. I'm a defensive midi, but my whole life I was an offensive midi and had never really played defense. Uh, when I came in my freshman year, I was completely lost on the field in practice, and I really didn't think that I was ever going to play here. But I just didn't give up. I kept with it, put in the time, put in the extra work, figured out the defense, learned how to be a D-Midi, and just kind of went from there. It's just such an incredible honor. I just wanted to try to do everything in my life, whether it was on or off the field, for Nick and the way that he would have done it. Someone had a tough day at school or they're not getting it done on the lacrosse field, or they're starting to feel sorry for themselves, all they gotta do is walk through this door and see this locker. And I think it brings them back to reality going, hey, it's not so bad. You know, there's, there's a uniqueness about the number 27 and that that number seems to be always in the air in the lacrosse community. And for me, it, it, that 27, I, I still live to this day to do push-ups around the number 27, to do crunches around the number 27. Plain and simple, that's Fathead. Every time I see that number, just clicks into my head immediately. So whose idea was the Fathead Award? Uh, actually, the coaches called. They called me and they said, hey, we have an idea for the, uh, to keep you in touch with the team. And we, we wouldn't even give them the award for like, the best players of the game. Here's the sticker. It is a, uh, a picture of a Fathead with the number 27 uh, in the middle of it to represent me. You know, growing up and, and even in high school and, and through college, it, it started out and it was always head. Um, and for, for some reason, I remember just looking at him and just thinking, he's got a pretty big dome for, for his size. And I was just started, I'm like, hey, fat head. And it kind of just stuck. It was something just to kind of get into him a little bit and just drive him a little bit, you know? and. And when the Fat Head Award came out, it brings a smile to my face when, when I see all these awards presented to uh, all these amazing student athletes. It, it started out something small and has turned into something amazing, so I'm truly blessed to uh, be a part of it. It was a tremendous honor to get a, a Fat Head sticker. Uh, it meant you were doing something selfless. You're doing something to help the bigger picture. You know, and at that time it was to help our team, you know, hopefully get a win. but. You know, it, it's a game of, of plays and, you know, one more. So if you make that one tremendous play, maybe it helps out the team down the line. But, you know, getting a Fat Head Award was uh, very special. And when you had it on your helmet, you, you were, it was a remembrance of, you know, okay, I got this. Let's, let's do it again and try and get another one. Uh, the Headstrong Foundation has done amazing things um, for the last 13 years and counting. And, and what, what it's allowed 
those student athletes and the lacrosse community to do is to raise awareness and funds um, and have that directed to the right, the right people, the right families, and the right community of, uh, of cancer. To hear $25 million when I remember staying here late at night or getting here early in the morning and dividing up t-shirts by size, by color, resending them out to teams so that they can sell them. And we thought that a couple thousand dollars per team was going to make a difference then and to have it grow into something that it is today uh, and to sit back and watch it, it happen. Uh, it's moving. It is, you know, it, 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 I'm just an, an honored uh, to be just a very small part of it. Being able to impact as many lives as I can as possible as a coach, having the Headstrong legacy and Nick's legacy in remembrance is just something that I'll carry on forever. And hopefully those little guys that I coach and, you know, they'll, they'll be able to tell the same types of stories passed down after generation after passed down after generation. So. It's truly uh, something I honor and carry very highly. Don't give up. You fight, but you fight with a smile on your face. You fight being a good person, because um, it's about, you know, passing that on to other people. So, you know, Nick, Nick was a fighter. Nick always had a smile on his face, and he was also always the first person to help. You know, I hope my kid one day can, can be, you know, anything like Nick in spirit. I'm so thankful that each year we talk about number 27. Some people, their legacies diminish as time goes on. You know, life is sometimes unfair and it's cold and life just kind of rolls on. And with us celebrating number 27 and the new beginning of a new 27 every year, we get a chance to, we get a chance to relive Nick and his impact in this program.